WWWTV News is brought to you by the Wishy Washy Windshield Wiper Company. They're fairly certain it will work well in wet weather. Now, here's Will Watson. Well, thanks, cousin. It's just two more shopping days till Christmas, and everybody's out there rushing on the street trying to get home with all their treasures. We're going to be going with Wendy W. Wigwacker, right in the middle of the wash. Ah! right in the middle of the rush, excuse me, and she's gonna try to catch some of that live action down there, try to catch that spirit in the street of the holidays. Right to you, Wendy. Thanks, Will. People are indeed passing with huge packages as they scramble to find that last present. The Christmas mood is bright, however, as we meet smile after smile. Excuse me, sir. Wendy W. Wigwacker of WWWW News. Would you mind sharing your Christmas joy with us? Huh? I said, would you mind sharing your Christmas joy with us? Huh? Would you mind huh? sharing? Huh? Sir, huh? would you mind sharing? Huh? Hello? Huh? Sir? Huh? Hello? Huh? Well, it seems we have just had an encounter with one of our city's um, more colorful characters, but what's Christmas without a fruitcake? We'll keep looking. Excuse me, ma'am. Wendy W. Wigwacker of WWWW News. Would you mind sharing your Christmas joy with us? Joy? You want me to have joy? Well, then give me some money, honey. I'm trying to live off my sorry social security from my sorry late husband's sorry pension from that sorry job he worked at for 30 sorry years. Do you know what he did for 30 years? What did he do? He stood around making faces all day. Really? Yup. He worked at a clock factory. Uh, <laughs> now, here it is. Christmas. And I've got 23 greedy grandchildren who all want my money. And I'm just, I'm flat busted. In fact, you want to see what I could buy myself this Christmas? Here's my Christmas dinner. So, you want me to talk about having joy? Well, get real, ma'am. Well, at least she shared her dinner with me. Surely someone's feeling happy today. I guess we'll just keep looking. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind sharing why Christmas is such a joy-filled time for you? Joy? Where? I don't have time for joy, you idiot. Don't you get it? I've got brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, in-laws at my house right now. They all need food, they all need gifts, and they all need a bath. <laughs> the plumbing's broke, oh. and I'm out here trying to get this stuff for my wife. She sent me out here, and where is she at right now? I don't know. She's probably at home playing on Facebook. <laughs> Lord knows she's not cooking. Anyways, I'm out here trying to find this stuff. I can't find any of this stuff. The stores are out of stuff. The sh my therapist is out of the office. The shoppers are out of control. And I'm about out of my mind. i got to remember this cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. Got Christmas joy seems to be a rare commodity here in the big city. But everywhere, the lights are shining, a light snow is falling, and the sound of carols is being sung in the air. It seems that what we have here is a true symbol of the season, some Christmas carolers, hardly seen anymore, especially in the big city. Let's listen for a moment. Just stand right there. 
right there. Don't you help me with my bags? That oh, was no. wonderful. Just wonderful. Oh, I got it. Um, it's so great in this day and age to see a group of people set aside their own busy schedule. Um, as I was saying, the sounds of this season are a great backdrop as we try to find the joy of Christmas. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am. Would you mind sharing why Christmas brings you joy? What? I, I can't even hear you. They're, no, I, they're so loud. Would you mind sharing why Christmas brings you joy? What? What? <gasps> you made, you're a little boy? You, you, you lost your little boy? Oh, I lost my little girl one time over there at that King's Island. No, but yeah, yeah, no, stop, yeah. stop. Share, holiday, when we, cheer. When we find him, we'll get him right by the ear like this. And we'll squeeze him and we'll no, find him. No, no, stop. I didn't lose my little boy. But share, holiday, cheer. Uh, yeah. uh, you think my hair looks like a horse's wear? What kind of a TV person are you? How dare you? Oh, oh. Um, as... Oh, this is great. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're not even good singers. You need to move. Okay, this is great. And now, we will ask the Christmas carolers to donate their money this holiday season to the poor. Thought they'd start singing the 12 Days of Christmas next. We'll keep looking. Here comes a promising fellow. Let's see if he has the spirits of the season. Chestnuts nipping at your nose. Yeah! I got the spirits of Christmas right here. They helped me through this stupid time of year. Because nobody, and I mean nobody, wants anything to do with an old stupid, stanky, smelly, sloshed, slummy, dummy like me. Do you know how long it's been since I had a Christmas present? No. Go ahead, I'm going to let you guess. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to say like four. One. Okay. Five. Eight. Seven. Never, ever, ever. That's right, never. And it makes me sick. And I'm sick. Look at this coated tongue. Ooh, it's got fur on it. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah you. I've been sick for longer than I can remember. I only got a sliver of liver left. Oh. And I got so many ulcers up in my stomach. It looks like the Swiss cheese, and that gives me the chronic halishofish, halablofish, hale hale bad bread. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can see that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how how, th how thick it is, you drunk I am, really? Really? Um. Re really drunk? I ain't drunk. I'm sick. And when I'm sick, then I drink. And when I drink, I get drunker. And when I get drunker, I get sicker. I get sicker. You know what I mean, buddy? Mm, feeling sick myself now. Thank you for that. Yes, it's great. Is that, is that a camera? Yes, this is Wendy W. Wigwacker. W Are we on the television? Uh huh. The big, the yes. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. I always want to do this. Wait a second. Big Boo! Big Boo! Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're live. We're actually live, so they can't really edit that out. Ah, oh my it's not, goodness, it's that's not so funny. funny. You know what you need? You need to lighten up. No, it's I'm Christmas. Here. No, I don't need to lighten up. You need some that. of this. No. You need some of this. Oh, oh, so sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. No. Oh, this is my new coat. Let me help you clean. I'm so Ew, sorry. It smells so, so sorry. bad. I'm going to get sick. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, that's better. Hold oh, I'm glad you're better. Okay. Okay. You want to get Okay. I'm still alive. This is, this is lovely. We are having a great time downtown. Yum. 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 Yes. 
This is great. Yes. Love, love this part of my job. Smelling great. All right. We will try just one more time to find this joy. Okay. Here we go. Excuse me, sir. Would, okay, um, would you mind sharing why Christmas brings you joy? How dare you approach me about celebrating Christmas? Awesome. That pagan commercialized excuse for running up credit card bills, worshiping at the false altar of Santa Claus, and getting drunk. Ha! Huh. Smells like you've had a few swigs yourself. No, there is this man out here. The and materialism, the greed, the mad rush for what? I tell you, it's evil. Pure evil. Look at me. Ooh. I do not participate in this heathen rite. And I have the true joy of the Lord. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I keep getting it with things that I smell really bad. And I just want my mom. Mom, where are you? I hate my Is job. everything ah! okay there? Um, yeah. Uh, will, you, will you mind sharing why Christmas brings you joy? Well, sure, but I think you need a little more attention than I do right now. Here, let me help you up. Okay. Now, what seems to be the problem? Well, first there was this man. He kept saying, choo, 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 and I don't even know why. And then there was this one woman, and she had a rubber chicken, and she hit him in the head. And then there was this other man, and he really wanted some cheese whiz. And then there was this woman who said I thought her hair looked bad, but I didn't say that, even though it did. But I wouldn't say that. And then there was this man, he was drunk, and he spilled it all over me on my new coat. And now I'm all wet, and my makeup is raining on my face. And now he just hit me with an umbrella, and it's not raining. So I don't whoa, know why he whoa. had an umbrella, and I don't whoa, know what whoa, to do catch, right now. Catch your breath <sighs> now. Catch your breath now. I mean, it seems like you've just about lost your holiday spirit. Well, I don't know why people celebrate the holidays. Because I now have a headache, and they give headaches. Oh, that's because they've forgotten what it's all about. For the angels said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Oh, that's what this season is all about. We put so much faith in Santa Claus and presents. But how many times have you received a gift that you didn't want or couldn't need or couldn't use? Storing it in the attic or throwing it in the garbage or regifting it to someone who would do the exact same thing to it. Or that special gift you gave your child, watching him play with it for a week and then putting it away and never playing with it again. All these things just leave us feeling empty and wanting more. Oh, but it's about the birth of a Savior. A gift of love from a compassionate God. A gift so wondrous that it's indescribable. Oh, a gift so wondrous that it's beyond our comprehension. It's about the gift of eternal life, of sitting at the feet of my Creator for all eternity in His love and His peace and his wonder and his splendor. Oh, it's a gift that can never grow old. It's a gift that can never die. It's a gift that never, ever fails to satisfy. That's what this season is about. I guess I forget that sometimes in all my busyness. Oh, that's so true, and so many, so do so many others. That's why depression is at an all-time high this time of year. We put our trust in, in, in things that just leave us empty and wanting more. So you're saying that people celebrate the Lord coming into the world by giving others presents, but never invite them into their own hearts. Oh, you've got it. Oh, you're so close to the kingdom of God. Come on, why don't we go discuss this over a cup of hot chocolate? My treat. There you have it. Sometimes in all the hustle and bustle, it's hard to find the joy of Christmas. But maybe, just maybe, we've been looking in the wrong places. Maybe the joy lies not in a package from Macy's, but in a gift that God sent to us all wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This is Wendy W. Wigwacker reporting live from downtown. Now back to the studios of WWWTV News.
You ever get the feeling that there's a party going on, but for some reason it just kind of feels like the guest of honor has been left out? It's the way it feels sometimes. And it's good to be reminded tonight of while the world goes on and celebrates in its own different ways, it's right for us as Christians to remember the reason that we celebrate. Jesus Christ came, the Savior, born, and he is our Redeemer, and we have a right to celebrate. Amen? God has given us the greatest gift of all, and that is love, that is hope, that's peace, and that's joy. Tonight, as our ushers are coming to serve you before our, the rest of our presentation this evening, we want to give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your gifts. And as you've come tonight, there's no charge for this event. But we do want you to have the opportunity to worship the Lord in your giving tonight. Let's pray together. Father, as we come before you, we thank you for, this, for the purposes of Christmas. I thank you that in midst all of the parties and the lights and the trees and the sails, although there is a truth that prevails through it all, and that is that you came, that you have given to us the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. We honor you tonight and we worship you. Now as those who have come and are prepared to give, we ask your work to be accomplished and done as we honor you and live, Lord, to give you praise, glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, what tonight has been about has been about different things, different scenarios, dramas, music, different groups, but it's all been about searching for that Christmas spirit. Some of them did it in the wrong way. And we see that all too much and too often in this world. People looking for answers, looking for love, looking to fill the emptiness in every heart. Every man, every woman, every boy and girl is all created in the image of God. And everyone has that hole down inside of them that only God can fill. And as you've seen, some of them are searching for answers in the alcohol and the drugs. They're looking for it in the loves of this life, the lusts of this world. They won't find the answer. How many of you know Jesus is still the answer for the whole world? For the whole world. He's the answer. And as people are searching, tonight was a representation of that, but it all comes back to the simple truth that we find even in the very word of God. When Mary received the news from the angel, the Bible says she worshiped. When Elizabeth received the news from Mary, the Holy Spirit filled her life and she worshiped even the baby inside of her, John the Baptist. The Bible says he leaped for joy. Zacharias was over in a corner finding his own camp meeting while Joseph was having a dream and woke up and worshiped. The shepherds came from far away and when they found him, it says they were praising God and worshiping him. And of course, the multitude of the heavenly host sang glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards all men. The Bible says they worshiped. The wise men came and they worshiped. And what you have there is the truth that is, that'll touch every one of our own lives if we'll just see it. When you can truly say that you've come into contact with the very real spirit of God, the spirit of Christmas, there's only one proper response. Because God is love, and love is not love unless it's given and received, then your only response is to worship. To give your life to him who gave you life. To give back to him, the one who gave you your heartbeat. The very breath that you breathe in your body, God gave that to you. And it's only right in a night like tonight as we are around the lights and so much that we saw here tonight is real life. I mean, it seemed almost sacrilegious sometimes to have this kind of thing in church, but yet at the same time, the relevancy is unreal. It's uncanny. It's like a reality TV show because everywhere you go, every place out there, they're all searching and running. They're busy and they're chaotic and they're searching for that peace, that love, that joy in all of the wrong ways. But tonight in this place, we come together. And for just a few moments, while the sails are still going on and the lights are still lit, and the plans for getting together with family are still in place. For just a moment, would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me before I want to speak to two different people here tonight. 
I want to speak to the one who doesn't know Christ at all. That you don't have a clue what the real meaning and the spirit of Christmas really is. You've heard the stories and you've been to church perhaps all your life, but never have you come in confrontation with the real love of God. Because it's not a religion. It has nothing to do with a denomination, a church, or a certain preacher. It has everything to do with a Savior who came. And that Savior loves you. He wants to be your Lord and your Savior. That's it. In a nutshell, He came because of love. He came because it was His mission to reach you, to find you. He wants you to accept him tonight and discover the real purpose of Christmas. And then the other person I want to speak to tonight is perhaps the one who has been in the church. You've been a Christian perhaps for a long time, but you have found yourself caught up in the chaos around you. Christmas has become more of a stress. It's become more of a burden. And maybe you feel like some of these folks did, that the joy is just gone. I would ask you to just pause for just a few moments in your own spirit and just remember remember what he did for you remember how heaven's very son the prince of peace literally left the throne of God poured himself into the infant little baby incarnate son of God yet son of man became a little baby for you and I that he might grow among us live among us and know us so that he might be able to appeal to our own heart and sense of need. That's your Savior. That's the difference between him and any other God, any other religion that's ever been made up by man. Jehovah, Shalom, our peace. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. He came to know you personally. And we are here tonight, blessed of God. And it's our only proper response to remember and to worship. And so I would ask everyone tonight, everyone to recommit, rededicate their own heart and life to Christ. To give yourself completely and wholly back to the purpose and the true spirit of Christmas. To really allow the power of heaven come to earth to touch your own heart again. Lord, move us once again with the message of Bethlehem's manger and the beauty of of the baby that was born our Savior so tonight would you would you recommit and rededicate yourself right where you stand would you pray with me a prayer that just accepts him back into your life for those who are brand new and for those who would just say I want to recommit and rededicate myself to the to the purposes of Christmas to Jesus Christ the Son of God would you pray this prayer with me dear Lord Jesus Lord come into our hearts renew our love for you forgive us of our sins we accept you as the Savior and the Lord all over again we ask you to be the Lord of our life we know that you're the Son of God you came and you died for us and you rose again for us and we believe we accept and we confess you are Jesus Christ Son of God and so we thank you tonight Renew in our hearts this wonderful spirit of Christmas. And we will worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you give him praise tonight and honor? Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that tonight? He's still the Christ of Christmas. Amen. He's that in your life and in your family. My challenge, of course, this year, this Christmas, is that you make it the best ever. How many of you know this could be the very last Christmas that we spend on this earth? Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? One more time, would you help me to thank this wonderful choir? All, di all three choirs, actually. We have the Altered Youth Ministry Oasis Praise Team. Where are you at? Lift your hands, guys. Awesome. Did a great job tonight. Where is the Voices of Psalm 95? You tore it up tonight. Where are you at? There you are. Beautiful. Exaltation Choir, thank you. Where are you? There you are. Don't forget the wonderful, all the orchestra. Stand up and take a bow. Come on, guys. <laughs> a bunch of party poopers. <laughs> They've been sitting the whole time. <laughs> all of them in the rhythm band, and of course, our minister of music, Gary Turner, and his beautiful wife, Kathy. We love you guys.
The directors, Angie Tackett, right there. She's over altered. L lift your hand up there, Angie. And Jane Jewell, Jane, right here. There she is, over our voices of Psalm 95. We hope you've enjoyed tonight. Just hope you to get into the spirit of Christmas and to go and have a wonderful, wonderful couple of weeks yet that we have to celebrate and to honor. You know, I saw them all down through my neighborhood. They were, they were decorating for Halloween and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I never saw so much orange and purple in my life all down through my neighborhood. And I was determined that for Christmas, I didn't so much as turn on a porch light for Halloween, but for Christmas, I was determined that I was going to make sure that if they're going to celebrate witches and goblins, we're going to celebrate in my house, Jesus Christ. So it's lit up. I told the church Sunday, I was driving down the road and I saw a big old happy holiday sign in the yard. And that used to be a good thing. I used to like that. But now I just got so like, Argh! in my spirit, I went straight to Walmart and I bought a Merry Christmas sign. Because I am not happy holiday and I'm Merry Christmasing. Amen? Amen. I'll preach in the morning. If you don't have a home church, please come back and be with us. I would like to recognize, I see a couple of pastors out here. Larry and Patty Hayes, you're out here. Would you lift your hand, Pastor? We're so glad that you're with us tonight. Thank you for coming. Honor you, wonderful man and woman of God. And also, Brother Shepherd, Brother and Sister Shepherd, is she here with you? All right, would you stand, Sister Shepherd? We're so glad to see you over at Healing Word. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Are there any other pastors here tonight? Anybody else? Anybody who wants to be a pastor, you know. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming and being with us. Merry, Merry Christmas. God bless you.